going to be discussing about fringe benefits. So I'm going to be defining what fringe benefits are and then give some examples of fringe benefits that may be subject to taxes. Then discuss the evaluation of your fringe benefit and then give sample computations of your fringe benefit tax. So a fringe benefit is a benefit that supplements the compensation of an employee, particularly an employee that's not rank and file, more of the supervisory or managerial positions. And it may come in the form of housing, money, company car, membership, or others. So the tax rate for fringe benefits effective January 1, 2018, which is actually the implementation of your train law, the fringe benefit tax is increased to 35%. The gross up monetary value of the fringe benefit given to non-rank and file employees shall be determined by dividing the actual monetary value by 65%. So to compute your fringe benefit tax, we have your taxable monetary value, divide that up with your gross up factor, then multiply that with your fringe benefit tax rate, which is actually your 35%. Now in determining your monetary value of your fringe benefit, we have to look into it if the benefit received by the employee is either money or property. Now if it's money or paid directly by the employer, the face value of the money or the actual amount paid for. Whereas if it's property and there is transfer of ownership, the fair value of the property and subject to your section 6 of your tax code. Whereas if it's property as well, but there is no transfer of ownership, the depreciable value of the property shall be your valuation. So I listed down the examples of your fringe benefit along with their valuation or their monetary value. Now, under your tax code, there are actually 10 fringe benefits that were enumerated there. You can check out the fringe benefit along with the monetary value in this list that I've created over here. So let's go to your first illustration. The fringe benefit that was given by the employer over here is your educational assistance of 78,000. So from the monetary value of your fringe benefit, which is your 78,000, we divide that by your gross up factor of your 65%. And then we'll arrive with your taxable value of your fringe benefit, which is 120,000. And then we multiply that by your fringe benefit tax rate, which is your 35%. So the fringe benefit tax is 42,000. So let's go to your second illustration. The fringe benefit that we're talking about here is in terms of your housing. Now for tax purposes, the following were given. You have your market value, zonal value, and assessed value. Now in solving this, we have to select whichever is higher between the market value, zonal value, or your assessed value. So to compute your monetary value, you have your 1.8 million, which is the higher of the three, multiply that by your 5%, and then again, multiply that by 50%, and then we'll get your monetary value of 45,000. So after we get the monetary value of 45,000, that's the time we divide that again with your 65% gross up factor, and then we'll arrive with your taxable value of your fringe benefit. And then multiply that again with your fringe benefit tax rate of 35%. So we'll get your fringe benefit tax of 24,231. And that's it. Although fringe benefit taxes are a bit rare in terms of actual practice, it's still good if we know how they are computed. So if you found this video very helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, guys, a huge thanks for supporting the channel. If you have any comments or suggested content that you'd like me to cover, you can comment down below. 
and consider subscribing if you haven't yet already. So this is Gerard, have a great day.